Türkiye'nin ilk ve tek Star Wars video podcast'i Galaksinin Sesi'nin yeni bölümüne hoş geldiniz. Ben Ateş Çetin. Her zaman olduğu gibi yanımda dostlarım Niko Fenerli. Merhabalar. Ve Oğuzhan Arslan var. Selamlar. Ee, bizleri YouTube, Castbox, Google Podcast, Spotify, iTunes gibi platformlar üzerinden takip edebilirsiniz. Ayrıca Instagram ve Facebook üzerinde de varız. Ee, bu klasik hatırlatmalarımızdan sonra arkadaşlar... Eğer takip ettiyseniz bir önceki bölümümüzde e, 6 kişi toplanıp bir Star Wars muhabbeti çevirmiştik. E, biz bu yayınımıza konuk alma işini sevdik. Sanıyoruz sizler de sevdiniz. E, bunun yanı sıra sizlerden gelen yorumları da okuyoruz. İşte şu ismi konuk alın, e, bu ismi konuk edin diye. Ama yok, bizi e, biraz tanıdıysanız e, azla yetinmediğimizi tahmin edersiniz. O yüzden bugün yayınımıza bir konuk alacağız ama... Bugünkü konuğumuz öyle böyle değil. <gülüyor> ee, özellikle yeni yayınlarda, pe- özellikle yerli yayınlarda e, pek de eşi benzeri görülmemiş e, bir şey yaparak Star Wars üçlemesinde, orijinal üçlemesinde yer almış bir oyuncuyu bugünkü yayınımıza konuk edeceğiz. E, bilmeyenlerin onunla tanışacağı, bilenlerin ise hakkında daha detaylı bilgiler edinebileceği birkaç soru soracağız. Aslına bakarsanız biz 501. Lejyon ve Asi Lejyonu olarak kendisini İstanbul'da konuk olarak ağırlamayı ve sizleri de onunla bir araya, bir araya getirmeyi planlıyorduk. Ancak malumunuz mikroskopik bir engel karşımıza çıktı. Her şey yolunda giderse bunu tekrar değerlendireceğiz. Başlamadan önce ufak bir parantez açalım. Sohbetimizde konuşma İngilizce devam edecek. Eğer bizi YouTube'dan izliyorsanız Türkçe altyazıları açabilirsiniz. Ee, o halde olsam <gülüyor> ya ee, daha fazla <gülüyor> rolü, e, lafı uzatmayalım <gülüyor> ee, ve konumuzu sizlere takdim edelim. Let's Ta- switch back to, to English, ha? Huh? <gülüyor> <gülüyor> um, Star Wars Bölüm 6 Jedi'in dönüşü filminde Jabba'nın soyundaki Rancor'a yem olan baş Twi'lek dansçı Ulla'yı canlandıran oyuncu Femi Taylor bugün konuğumuz. Um, Femi, th- thanks for joining us today and uh, welcome to our show. Thank you. Um, you are the first Star Wars celebrity that we have here, so we are extra excited about this. Um, before we begin, let me ask you uh, if all is well with you, because the world is definitely in dark times these days. And if there is a message that you wish to share, we would very much like to uh, help you spread. Well, gosh, we're confronted with um, <laughs> a couple of things, but you know, the, the COVID-19, um, this sort of unexpected virus that suddenly came into our lives and suddenly we, we have to make changes and think differently. Um, Um, and really to cut a long story short, I think it's actually quite a good thing because I think we got too entangled with um, stuff that we didn't sort of pay attention to or pay more attention to, like, you know, the mobile phones and not sort of concentrating on our friends and, and family and just doing simple things. So I think a lot of these things, I think a lot of good's going to come out of um, this um, these unprecedented times. Um, but... Wow, I mean, it's, it, no, nobody knows, nobody knows. And I think that's the, there's a the beauty in it and there's a fear in that. So, but I, I sort of trust that, you know, we have, there's a process in life that takes place. Um, and we all just sort of have to have sort of that faith and know that this will all sort itself out for the better. I think mm-hmm. things come into our existence for a reason. So I, I really feel it's, Although, you know, there's been a lot of deaths and um, a lot of sadness and a lot of fear in terms of the um, the economy and people's jobs and living, all of that, because it's just something we didn't, we weren't prepared for and we didn't expect. But I, I do trust that things will, will, you know, sort of settle, the dust will settle and, and the new routes, the new routes will come up because I just think, Then this, I don't know, maybe there's this be sort of complete clearance and we need to sort of start again um, and have a different perspective on things. So I'm just trying to be positive here. And we've been really lucky here in Denmark because that, I don't want to say this quite lightly, but you know, there's been I think about 500 deaths here 
um, uh, um, and I can't remember how many people have had the the, the, the virus, um, but you know we're sort of we're on stage three, and it's sort of we're all being very careful still. But you know you can sort of go back to normality, but be careful as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas the UK, you know where I was living, it's in the states where we know how tragic that that has been. But um, I just think I'm just hope that the good things will come out of out of this. Winter always tends to spring. Yeah. yeah. We we all hope the same. Yeah, no, I mean really we we've only got hope, love and yeah, just hope that everyone comes through this and people who are suffering come through this, people who are um, confronted even now with the virus, we come through we come through this. And also with the whole thing with the George um Floyd thing, I really hope that there's there's major change there, major change as well. So it's just interesting how those two things, major um, issues, have come up, and they have to, there has to be major change in both areas. So uh, yeah, yeah. I hope. Well, pray. We hope we we hope so. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well. Um, you know, we, we would like to introduce you to uh, the new generation of fans because, wow. uh, you know, the original trilogy is the classics uh, yeah. of the Star Wars saga. Absolutely. Uh, and and mm -hmm. you are playing one of the most memorable characters. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, how were you made aware of this role, of this character? Um, well, first of all, um, uh, you know, I, I was very much into my dance career um, back in the early 80s and I have an agent and they um, called me up and said there's this film that's been cast and would you be interested in going along and um, back then, and I think it's still the same, there, there's a whole secrecy around uh, Star Wars and we weren't told what it was, we had to... Uh, and, and you know, immediately I just thought, I'm not going to go because I don't know what it is. Um, I, the brief has been very brief. Uh, so, um, but something inside me said, go along and meet the director, the late Richard Markman, and um, see what it's all about. So I did that and I had a little chat with him and um, he asked me if I could dance. And I said, yes, I can. He said, well, we'd like to invite a few of you back to do um, a, a, a dance audition and just see where we, where we can go from that. And I still kept asking, what is this film? He said, look, I really can't tell you. And I said, okay, well, I respect that. But I went along to the dance audition uh, about a week later. And and um, there's about, I don't know, back then it was about 12, 15 of us. And we still didn't know what it was during the audition. And then at the end of the audition, um, one of the girls piped up and said, listen, what is this? And they said, what's the next Star Wars movie? And we went, oh, did we do a good enough audition? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so when I, I was doing, um, I, was, I was doing the show Cats the second time round, because I did it originally. And I was doing a different part in Cats. And um, by the time I got back to the, to, um, to, to, to the performance um, that I had to do that night. Um, I had a phone call from my agent saying that call me in the morning and so I did and then they said you've been off with the part um, as Ula in the next Star Wars saga. So that's how it came about. <laughs> back then, back then, all those years ago. Back then, did you watch, did you watch the previous movies before selected for the part well, yeah no what well, i did i watched it only because everybody said let's go and see the new star wars movie i, I wasn't to be honest i wasn't that interested i just mm -hmm. went along and watched it and i think the first one i was sitting like this man who was so drunk he kept on oh God, he kept on falling asleep on me so i didn't concentrate on the first film because i was too intoxicated with his smell <laughs> oh my goodness, unbelievable. <laughs> um, we have to say, we're talking back in the early 80s. And the second time when I saw Empire, I know it, oh, this is quite, this is a great film. Mm -hmm. um, so it had already reached a status in the, in the industry of film. So when we heard it was the next Star Wars movie, I just said, oh my goodness, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, Femi, uh, you also uh, told about us about 
that there was an audition uh, for yes. the role yeah. that you played in. So yeah. could could you please elaborate on that? You know, how was it like? You know, how was how was the you know audition was you know proceeding? You know, what were the main you know issues that the you know let's say the jury was focusing on? Um, well, the the main thing we had a very good choreographer, um, Anthony Van Last choreographed it, who was um, a, a very well-known choreographer in London and you knew the standard was going to be good so mm -hmm. um, but but you know the, the, the, the, the weird thing here was that we had no idea what the film was we had no idea what we auditioned it could have been an extra we had no idea but because I knew the choreography, choreography was well established I knew that it was something serious so we had to do this contemporary modern um, piece and learn it and then um, break it down into two people um, to do it to to to um, audition in front of Richard Mark Quinn and a couple of other people um, but you know it was it was it's a grueling audition it was like, like two hour audition it wasn't it mm. wasn't easy but because I had my dance training I, I, I, I it was it was fine for me you know I, I didn't feel oh my gosh goodness I'm out of my depth here because um, I you know I'm a trained dancer and you had to be trained to be able to do that choreography so um, it, it was a pleasure to do so that that's how it was and as I said there was only about 12 15 people 15 mm. girls girls of color doing it because back then there weren't that many good black um, female dancers so and I knew nearly all of them um, so yeah that that was my audition great <laughs> So, um, during the audition, you had uh, this um, contemporary style of choreography. Mm -hmm. Was it different uh, when you were filming the, the choreography? Uh, uh, yes, it was, because when, when I did, when I was rehearsing for Ula, um, we had the choreographer Gillian Gregory, and I had worked with her before. I did the show The Wiz, and she choreographed me in The Wiz. So uh, it was, it, it, it, I mean, it was similar because it, it, again, it had to be sort of contemporary, but it had to be as if it was wasn't sort of choreographed, choreographically um, choreographed. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of people say to me, "Was it choreographed?" And I thought, it's not that bad. It wasn't choreographed. I think, oh. But you, you know, it had to. It had to look as if I was sort of. I had just got off, and asked when Jabba the Hutt asked me to dance, and I was sort of like lame, and I, you know, my whole sort of thought process was, like, I really don't want to do this, but I have to do it. Maybe I don't do it good or well, but then um, he will allow me to sort of let me go. So I had to sort of incorporate all of that, and as, as well as looking technically good and. Yeah, so it, it was contemporary, but it, it, now looking back on it, I don't think it, it didn't need to be so polished. Mm. It was sort of more to do with, um, you know, the, the struggle that I had in my character having to be entertaining him all the time. So, um, and I think that's why people say, was it choreographed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I, I, I uh, specifically wanted to ask this because um, uh, in, in Turkish culture and Eastern culture, belly dancing mm -hmm. is uh, a part of our lives. So, of course, yeah, of that, course. that that scene is uh, especially uh, interesting for the Turkish fans. Okay, <laughs> okay, because of what I just said, because you know they, they incorporate what's gone on, the layers of your your, mm -hmm. I guess, life journey into into the dance, and like the belly dancing, that's the same. Ah, yeah. oh, I have to look into belly dancing just. Understand what, what's behind that? No, we, it's, not, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I'm into very much in behind the camera yeah. details. Can you tell us some details about the set or something you remember, especially yes. about the set in the filming procedure? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, when I did it originally, I mean, the set, the, the sound stage was massive. It was huge, huge, and you know, you're walking into this. Uh, th this another world basically and um you know the set design i think was phenomenal and what they did like the, the, the throne that i had to sit on by jabba and the size of jabba that like, there were four people in jabba the heart and he was massive you know operating his hands his arms and his eyes and um um, another one, his his face, and someone in the middle doing the breathing, and someone at the table. I mean, his tail. It was incredible. Um, 
and you know when after I do my dance routine and he kills me and the, and the throne um, slowly flights back. With my, yes, I mean the whole thing moved. Honestly, that's not computer generated because back then they didn't really have it. The whole thing moved and it was just the it, yeah, it, it, it, it, it was extraordinary, extraordinary. Mm. The whole set of, of Jabba's Palace and how uh, and it was very forward thinking back then. It was very forward thinking, mm. very forward, and, it, and it's and it's um, stood up in its test of time. I mean, it's still classic, I think yeah. so. Yeah, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Um, again, you know, it's a question regarding the set. I mean, did you, you know, have any, you know, some sort of a, let's say, memory or a dialogue with, you know, George Lucas during the, you know, uh, during the shooting process or during the shooting of this? Specific... You know what, George oh. Lucas. I didn't even recognize him. I didn't even know who he was. I mean, I should, I did know who he was, but. A couple of times when I was waiting, because it, George, didn't, George didn't direct me, it was, um, oh gosh, David Tomlinson, and, and, and of course Richard Markman directed me. But yeah. George was very much behind the camera, so I used to think, who's that guy? Is he a team man or something? <laughs> <laughs> So um, he wasn't. He wasn't. Pre he was present, but he wasn't present. Mm. And he's a very shy man, anyway. Um, he just. I think he just allowed Richard to to do what he needed to do, and yeah. David Tomlinson to do what he needed to do. So I didn't really have much dialogue with him. But um. But you know, I had dialogue with with Mark Hamill because you know he, when you have there's a lot of waiting around as well either I was waiting in my dressing room because I couldn't go anywhere because I was painted all green I didn't want the green to come off um and, and or Mike Carter and, my, and myself Mike Carter who plays beautiful tuna whilst mm -hmm. we'd be sitting in our makeup chair redo you know touching up the makeup in, in makeup with our books um so it was quite but once I got on set it was really nice because I was with everybody else so you know in between takes, Mike, Mark Hamill just come up and just say, you know, just have a little chat to me. It was really sweet. And Billy used to have lovely little chats. And um, well, R2D2, he, he, well, he couldn't. Well, actually, when he put the thing out, there he was. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought, oh my God, there's a little man in there. And, um, and, and, and, and, you know, and Carrie Fisher was, you know, that, and, and Harrison Ford was just too busy. I think, I think. Carrie wanted to just get on to her next scene, mm -hmm. and the house for used to just pace up and down, remembering his lines, and I could see his mouth mumbling. I thought you're remembering your lines, I think. <laughs> um, and, and and then you know we had both. I had everybody in that scene. I had everybody, which was great. But really, it was just Mark and Billy used to just come and sit and just have a little chat, and that was really nice. So, you know, the time passed and I thought, oh, okay, it's all like a family. It was just like a family. There was no egos, nothing like that. Just everyone was there to do their job. And um, when I had to get up and, and dance, uh, you know, I had to blot everybody out because everybody was there and all the extras and all the monsters, everyone was there. And I just thought, just do it, girl. Just get up yeah. and do it. Um, and it was great. It was really, really good. Yeah. Um, it was really fun. How, how, how long did it take to uh, shoot your scenes? Well, I, uh, uh, uh, it took about, it, it took about a week. And I know that's uh, maybe like four or five days. I know that sounds a long time because I've only got, you know, screen time, I don't know, a few minutes. Although you see me, the scenes before sitting there. Um, so, you know, they were shot on different days as well. So um, it really, it took about, yeah, four or five days and different angles, master shot, um, close-ups, all those. It just, it, it takes time. And then you suddenly think, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. is that all on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> but it's memorable. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, let me, a good enough job. <laughs> let me tell you that. You look great. You look as oh, you were you. <laughs> in 80, 83 and 83. also in... N91, you look exactly oh. how it was there then yeah. sometimes. So as far as we know, you took place also in the 97th for the special edition. Yes, yes, yes. Can you tell us about that? How they found you? They yeah. realize, of course, that you are. You look exactly the same. And yeah, yeah. you have some more close-up scenes, right? Um, yeah, yeah, 
Yep, yep. It was exactly the same. Well, no, I was um, back in 90... I think, did I shoot it in 90, um, 95 or 96? I think it was 96 I shot it. Yes. Um, but um, and I was, you know, I was aware, I was away, I was in New York and I was staying with a really good friend of mine and, um, and, and I was out that afternoon and when I got back, she said, oh, look, you know, there's a phone call from the, from, from Lucasfilm. I went, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, and I thought she was kidding. But she said, no, no, no, no, Femme, this, this woman called Robin Gerland. She's mm. she's she's called you up and she wants you to call her back. Um, and back then, you know, you have those little telephone telephones and the light flashes to say there's a message. And the light was still flashing saying there was a message. So I listened to the message and I went, oh my goodness. So I called them back and she said, I said, this is Femi Taylor here. And she said, oh yeah, hi Femi. I, um, you know, my name's Robin Gerland and I've been trying to, we've been trying to track you down because, you know, we really want to do a special edition. We want to revamp the special edition and George Lucas wants to bring you back. Um, and the thing was, everyone said that you're never going to find her. And if you do find her, she's going to be fat and bitter and all that. And um, you, you're just wasting your time. And she said, Something said to her, I will find her and she'll be fine. So, um, and I said, oh my goodness. She said, look, the one thing you need to do is you have to be able to fit into your original costume because we would like to merge the original scene together with the special edition. We just want to clean up and add. And I thought, oh. And so she said, you know, can you possibly take some photos? On? So I went, I got my friend and we went down to the local gym somewhere in, in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> tired old gym and I did some poses and sent them off FedEx but sent them off and she said no no you haven't changed you're fine great and so um they said we'd like to fly you over in about two to three weeks time so um I said okay I'll just let me check my diary when I get back because I was only in I was only in New York for about four or five days and I got back and I was free and I I said yeah absolutely so um yeah, that's how they tracked me down. And to this day, I still don't know how they knew I was in New York because I didn't tell anybody. That was a weird thing. I don't know how she tracked me down. And my friend was staying in the Chelsea Hotel, the infamous Chelsea Hotel. So, oh, it's the mystic law, I guess. That's <laughs> something mystical that happened. But thank goodness they did because if they hadn't found me, then they would CGI me. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. And I thought, oh, it wouldn't have really worked. Yeah. And if I hadn't have been able to fit in my costume, they would have CGI'd me. So it was so bizarre when I went back to film Jedi, um, when I went to Industrial Light and Magic, and to film that, and to, oh, God, just to see my, my costume, and it smelt the same, and, and he, he, putting my original shoes on, and, and the, the lekus, the helmet, and, and the, my costume, which is not that much, but it's, I think it's a very clever thought out costume it's brilliant for for um, the first twilight um, <laughs> yeah so um th that's what happened that's what happened so so w was it exactly the same costume from yeah, yeah exactly the same because they had to merge the two scenes together so you know it's uh, so many people said to me oh did you take any of your costume i thought thank goodness i didn't <laughs> <laughs> because you know <laughs> You know, it was tempting to sort of take maybe one of the um, garter, garter things. I had garter to hold up my costume, my legs, and I thought, oh, these are quite cute, you know, leather garter. But I thank goodness I didn't because it all had to be the same. Uh, that's correct. I'm just get this out. There you go. Yes. Um, so that was sort of exciting. That was it. And it was, it was, it, it was a nice sort of accolade to myself that I just fitted into my costume just and then I saw this the funny thing was I saw these donuts on, on set there were all these donuts because George like George Lucas likes donuts right and I love donuts so I went oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't have a donut oh my god is it in, in, that, that, in the hotel room or um, when I say in the hotel room there's like free cookies and stuff and then I stayed in the ranch and there was free cookies and I thought I can't have any of these because I won't be able to do my costume up but anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but very cool story and very, you know, a memorable yeah. one, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since we since we were talking about this about your costume for the last mm. you know, couple of minutes, you know, uh, what do you think about it? About your costume? I mean, you know, how does it how did it feel like, you know, uh, being a Twilight and um, 
actually, to be honest, the costume itself is, you know, kind of a brave one. So, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's just, the weird thing is, I didn't think when I first saw the costume, I thought, what a clever costume. I didn't even think of its bravery. I just thought, because again, it was a job I had to do, just stepped in, did the job, put the costume on, don't complain and get on with it. So, um, but now looking back on it, that it is, it's really risky because I see all the, the cosplayers yeah. and I think, whoa, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. And that's the, oh, really, I've realized how risky and how, you know, and if someone said to me, okay, design a Ula, a Ula um, costume that fits the character, back her backstory, everything. I, I couldn't have come up with a better costume. I think it's, a, it's fantastic, but no, it's, it's really risky. Yeah. But I think it's very clever as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah. yeah. Well, beside yeah. the costume, um, the uh, most heart-taking side of it is the makeup, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, were you comfortable in it, or how long did it take to? Uh, um, I was, I was, I was comfortable in. It. I mean, they you, they couldn't cover my palms, of my hands, or the soles of my feet because my mm -hmm. skin had to breathe. The only uncomfortable thing, uncomfortable thing about the makeup was having to stand there for four hours at four o'clock in the morning. Um, that was painful because you know because I'm I'm so dark. It, it just took layer after layer. And back then they they didn't have the spray paint. They didn't have any. They just had little pots of you know, three different colors, like yellow and then a, a, a yellow and then a light green and a dark green. And they had to put all these layers on slowly, not slowly, but a little tiny sponge and a pot. And it just took forever. And even if there were two or three people working on me, it took forever. Um, and they did the same thing when I did went back to do the special edition. Mm -hmm. I thought, at least bring the spray paint out. But they had little pots. <laughs> but I think they had to match. They had to match. And I think they did a really good. They did a really good job mm -hmm. matching me from when I did it originally. But yeah, yeah, four hours, and they had to be ready by about seven, seven thirty for me to to be ready to go on on set. Although, you know, I wasn't, they wouldn't, leave, they, they wouldn't use me until 10, depending mm -hmm. on how long, but I had to be ready and I had to get to the studio, into the studio by about four o'clock in the morning. But that was the least fun bit, to be honest. But I, but once it was on, it was fine. It was, it was, it, mm, it was fine. You did, you did feel a little bit, you did feel this, you suffocating a bit, or you, but, <laughs> and it took like, you know, about 10 to 13 showers to get off because they had layered it. Mm. But you know what, being the first Twilight green and only green, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so coming back from the original trilogy to today, mm -hmm. um, what do you think about new Star Wars films and TV shows? You know, I'm going to be totally honest with you here. I haven't seen any of the, any of the TV shows. Mm. Um, the new ones, I think the last two, films that are really good. The last one is my favourite. I think it's taken a little time to sort of, sort of settle into the continuation of the story. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, I, you know, it's funny, I get asked these questions, that, that question a lot. So, and um, for me, I, it's not that I don't like, I, you know, I love Star Wars, but it was just one of many of my jobs. So I, I haven't sort of gone into it or I haven't gone, I, I'm not a fan of the stuff of the film, but you know, it's great, it's brilliant, but I'm not a fan of it. So I, I don't see myself sitting down on Netflix or, or Amazon Prime and watching the Star Wars things. I just mm -hmm. think, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me ask you that. I am much more into collecting and memorabilia collecting of Star Wars. Oh, memorabilia. Mm -hmm. do, do you own any Ula memorabilia or figure? Yeah. I see yeah. some in, in yeah, your... Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something which I think a, a fan painted um, and when I was doing a convention in Nor in Finland. I think it's beautiful. I, I'll just... just One second. Um, oh, they get my... Where, where, do, do, do, do, do, do, do, do, do, do, hang on. Oh, um, that's wow. great. That wow. Isn't, yeah. Hang on, I'll just try and get it in. Oh, oh, oh, damn. Oh, sorry. Isn't that stunning? 
Yeah. It is. How, it's it sort of like Medusa, uh, the, the snakes of coming out of my leg. I think yeah. it's so beautiful. It, is so this the original beautiful. one? So it's, it's one, of, one yeah, of a kind? Yeah, it, it's the original one. She painted it for me. And, I, and I've had a lot of uh, artwork. There's, there you are. And I've got... I've oh, got, I have that one too. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just wanted to show you that because I, I think it's just a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. A beautiful piece, and I have to sort of um, oh, promise for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> oh, put my put me down a little more, there you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I've got a lot of artwork that the fans have paint that done, and there's some beautiful artwork that I've got, so yeah, but yep, yeah, yep, yeah, up there, up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks great, it's that's it's absolutely stunning for me, really. I mean, especially. Yeah. The painting, isn't, I mean, it's... Isn't it stunning? It's a one-off and... It is, it definitely is. And she did a huge one. She did a, yeah, a really big one. And um, and I got that one. It's just stunning, stunning yeah. beautiful. And I got the impression that the artist is also, looks like a hardcore Star Wars fan, so... Yeah, she is, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So yeah. my next question would be about your relationship with these, you know, uh, fan communities. You know, the, yeah. there are lots of communities, Star Wars fan communities. Lots. Lots. Five of First Legion, Rebel Legion. So, could yeah. you please, you know, tell us about your relationship with those communities, with fan communities? Well, you know, they've made me honorary members. A lot of them have made me honorary members, which is which mm -hmm. uh, an honorary member, which is wonderful. Um, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm so lucky to have you know, to have played that role and what it has been able to um, uh, give to others. You know, just give to other fans and the Rebel Legions and um, the 501st, and especially the 501st, what they do, the charity work that they do, it's extraordinary. It Correct. really is. They make it's such good causes. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, none of this would have happened if there was no Star Wars. So I have a wonderful relationship with all those fan based people. And, then, you know, I'm really lucky to do the convention scenes and meet them. And, um, and just celebrate what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's great. Maybe Atish can just elaborate on those, you know, five for first and rebel legions because yeah. uh, we also, you know, run those initiatives in Turkey. We have five for first. Oh, do you have that? Okay, are you Turkish part outpost? Of of course. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm a stormtrooper. Oh, well, I'm yeah. a, I'm originally a stormtrooper, and Atish here, he's our Darth Vader. Oh, uh, brilliant! Unfortunately, Nico is not member yet. They, they are pushing me <laughs> so hard. They are pushing me so hard. I said I collect only. I don't become a collectible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Working on it. Just keep working on him. You'll crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, well done, because, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be able to meet you, travel, just, you know, be able to give. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you so we, much. we love Star Wars, we love you, meaning all oh. celebrities that took part in the movies, so yeah. you have very special place in our hearts. So it's always, a, it's always a pleasure to meet with you, to, to greet with you, so. Thank yeah. you, so, and likewise, you know, it's, it's likewise, so thank you. <laughs> um, talking about celebrities, uh, are you uh, close with any other Star Wars celebrities? Um, well, I'm only close with them. I am. I mean, when we do the convention scene, you see uh, you see a lot of people, um, and even the ones who are no longer here, um, and that you know, it's just like one big family. It really is one big family, and we get on and. And as we all know, we've also been so fortunate to have landed a role in the most biggest film in, in, in, in the universe, basically. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like, we'd, I don't see them in between like conventions, but when we see each other, it's like, they're like my brothers. They're all my brothers or my sister or my mum or my dad, you know, they're, they're sort of, they're all, it's a family. It's a family and we're all there for the right reasons. And, we're, we're really fortunate so yeah. but you know like, like Carrie I did a lot with Carrie for sure and I did a lot with Peter the late Peter Mayhew and and, and like Kenny Baker and you know I know we've lost all, quite a few of them quite a few of them but um you know Dave Parsons was a lot with but I know he's not doing it anymore and, mm -hmm. and Jeremy Bullock mm -hmm. um all of them I mean 
yeah, all of them. We just I had a, <laughs> had a great time. So, yeah. uh, did you, by any ch chance, have come together with uh, Gerald Holm? Uh, Gerald Holm, yes, yes. Yeah. I've done a few of Gerald Holm. Squiggly, that's one of the yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know Gerald? Yes, yes, we do. We do. Oh, okay. Um, he's also one of the characters in Jabba's Palace. Yes, of course, yes. I remember dancing in front of him. He was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, he's a squid, yes. Yeah, Gerard, yeah. I know Gerard, yes, very well. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Good guy, yeah. good guy, good guy. Um, mm -hmm. So, finally, Femi, um, mm -hmm. we, we know that you had plans visiting Turkey. Oh, yes. Affected by this pandemic. Yeah. Um, when these terrible times are over, can we say mm -hmm. that you are still interested in coming I to I would London? love to come to Turkey. I've never been to Turkey. So I'd love to come to Istanbul and do a mm -hmm. private signing. Um, that can be, because I do quite a few of those. I've been doing, and they- I need really to have it. I need to have it this one yeah, signed by yeah. you. Yes, I will, <laughs> This is yeah, my to-do my to -do yeah. list. Let, let's just open the borders and let me fly over. <laughs> yeah. and we've got the, the Denmark has opened its borders too but when this is all over definitely I think we should arrange for maybe a private signing in the in I don't know if you have a shop um a, a, a sci-fi shop mm -hmm. so I don't know do you do but do you do conventions there as well in Istanbul um mind you now it's yeah uh, yeah before uh, these times uh there were conventions held at uh, universities or colleges, so they, right. they are not very big and uh, almost none of them have any celebrity guests. So oh, right. Uh, right. Ha having you here would be uh, something original. Yeah. Yes, and, and original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, original, the original comes and she's original. But um, yeah. no, I, we, would, we, we would love to come over. We, we, I'd lo and I'd love to see Istanbul. We both would, would love to see Istanbul. Really, it's one of the cities I've never seen. I've been told it's just delightfully beautiful. So um, let's make that happen. Let's make that happen when this is settled and there's more safety and... Uh, oh gosh, just out of the blue this came crazy but let the, it, it will pass and and and life will get back well into a yeah. different normality but when it does and i hope it's soon um and you don't know maybe later in the year we we can arrange to do a, a, myself to come over my yeah. husband and do a signing me or you guys yeah, you fans that would be so hopefully. good yeah. So good, yeah. Fingers crossed. So yeah, yeah let's fingers, toes, everything crossed. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, those um, meet and greets that we found meet and greets in the store is better because it's just you're coming to see the, the one guest and you've got time to chat and da da da da da. da. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, let, let's let's let's see what happens. But I'm absolutely we are into coming over. We'd love to come over. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good to hear that, and yeah, I no. and totally agree about you know running those type of, these type of you know uh, let's say activities in a stores or in, in a shop. It yes. definitely gives the you know chance to other fans to meet and yes. greet you yes. and other celebrities. Absolutely, yeah, and you can do, and also if, we're, if they're scared about the whole um, social distance, you can social distance like that. Yeah. You know, if you, but I think that has to still be that measure has to still have to be put in place. But you can have that more control over that than I think. Mm -hmm. doing a huge convention i don't know but anyway whatever way it will be out will be over yeah it will, will be, be hopefully it will be soon yes i hope so too it'd be so lovely so lovely <laughs> Femi, um that's all our questions actually. okay well thank you i hope <laughs> i hope i hope i've answered them honestly and um and you know you're happy with them yeah. so, thank you very much they were honest answers. Yeah. <laughs> you Thank you very, very much. You were very Bye. generous with your time. You took oh, time no. and answered our questions. Thank you very much. It's oh, no, very important. Thank you so us. much. Oh no! Thank you so much for reaching out and um, and asking me these questions and doing Zoom. Um, and yeah, that's great. That's great. And I'm so glad. Thank you for being such you know, fan, mm -hmm. fan people. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was it was great i mean it's great to have you here really we really appreciate your uh, dedication of your time here oh no my pleasure yeah my thanks pleasure. thanks thank you for uh, being with us today and, and thank uh, you so much 
Yeah, uh, may the force be with you. Thank you. Yeah, may the force be with <laughs> you. Stay safe. Yeah. And um, let's keep in touch for, in terms of making arrangements for me to, and for Klaus to come to Istanbul and meet all you fans. Is there a lot? Is there a big fan base there? Um, yeah, for Turkey, yes, we can say that okay. the fan base is great. At you know, at least we have you know deep connections with them, so that we can okay. ask all people just to you know come down and see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, oh, it'd be, it's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. It's going to happen. So, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, still, I'm still here. I'm one of the only originals that's still here living on this planet. So <laughs> yeah, you look great, really. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And <laughs> lovely to speak to you both. And, and we'll see you in Turkey. Yep. Yeah, see you in Turkey. All right. In Turkey. Okay. Take care, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to turn this off. Uh, leave it. Evet arkadaşlar, e, Femi'ye de tekrar buradan teşekkür ediyoruz. E, yayını kapatalım arkadaşlar isterseniz. Ne evet. dersiniz? Biz e, katılımcı, misafir, konuk dedik. Konuk konusunda sınırları biraz açtık galiba. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Ve gerçekten, ee... gerçekten çok nazik. Çok kesinlikle. Gerçekten kesinlikle. zamanını ayıran, fanlarla ilişkisi çok iyi olan. Ben ilk defa kendisiyle konuşma fırsatı buldum. Ben de. Ama gerçekten e, harika biri. Ateş konuşuyordu aslında kendisiyle ama tabii <gülüyor> bu konuşmalar Whatsapp'tan oluyordu galiba. <gülüyor> yani arka plan hakkında bilgi vermek gerekirse işte biz e, Femin'in Türkiye'ye gelişi hakkında bir takım yazışmalar sürdürüyorduk. Sonra araya hmm. bu salgın girince o iş iptal oldu. Daha doğrusu iptal oldu demeyelim de ertelendi. Ee, sonrasında dedi ki madem evdeyiz e, bu şekilde bir araya getirelim hayranlarla onu. E, böyle bir video e, röportaj e, yapalım mı teklifinde bulunduk. Kabul etti. E, onu da şu anda size ulaştırmış olduk. Evet, Arkası evet. gelir mi Ateş? <gülüyor> Ar- arkası gelir. Arkası gelir. <gülüyor> arkası gelir. Bizden, bizden daha hızlı beklenemez. <gülüyor> çok iddialı, çok iddialı. Çok, çok iddialı. Çok iddialı. Ya şey, şu celebration netleşse aslında daha hala net bir bilgi de paylaşmadılar. Muhtemelen iptal edecekler de daha herhalde son dakikaya kadar bekliyorlar diye. Netleşse gidecek misin? E, bilemiyorum. Şimdi Türk Hava Yolları uçuşları başlatacağız diyor yurt dışı uçuşlarına ama Amerika hani sınırlarını açar mı açmaz mı muamma ki bence açmayacaklar. E, her halükarda bence gidemeyeceğiz zaten. Yani Amerika'dakiler için bunu belki yapabilirler bilmiyorum. Da hani yurt dışından e, gelecek olanlar için bir tedbir düşünürler mi? Nasıl bir çözüm düşünecekler? Oralar da muamma. Yani merakla bekliyoruz. Olsam üzülme. Celebration Türkiye'ye gelecek. İnşallah. <gülüyor> celebration Türkiye'ye ge- gelirse yani bu bu ekip getirecek onu da söyleyeyim. Tabii canım. Vay, benim bir Celebration Eurasia fikrim vardı. Bir ara Lucas filmi yazmıştım. Ben de logo yazdım. yapmıştım hatta onu. Evet. <gülüyor> yazdım sadece öyle yani yazmak. Yazdım, yazdım gönderdim. göndermedim. Gönderdim. Ha, gönderdim. Gönderdim ama. Göndermiş. Bir şey... Çünkü iyi fikir, güzel fikir. Celebration Eurasia. Hem Asya'yı birleştiriyorsun hem Avrupa'yı birleştiriyorsun. İstanbul'da büyük bir konvensiyon yapıyorsun. Bence ve turistik bir bölge. Hı hı. Lucasfilm dinliyorsa bir daha düşünün ya. <gülüyor> bence de. Bu girişimci kafadan çıkan bu dahi yani fikirleri bence dikkate almalı lazım. <gülüyor> Kesinlikle. Ama daha hala Avrupa'da yapmıyorlar. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> hani, Hala Avrupa'da yapmalar. Avrasya'yı geçtim daha Avrupa'ya gel- getirmediler kaç senedir. <gülüyor> Neyse güzel bir bölümdü arkadaşlar. Ben evet. çok çok güzel iyi oldu. zaman geçirdim. Çok iyiydi Femi. Ağzınıza sağlık. Evet. Ee, çok heyecanlanmadık. Ya ben biraz heyecanlıydım aslında ama. Ben de biraz <gülüyor> heyecanlıydım aslında. <gülüyor> ama iyi geçti galiba. Umarım izleyiciler de beğenmişlerdir. Yo, i̇yi geçti bence e, cevaplar konusunda da kendisinin de söylediği gibi bence gayet şeffaftı ve hani elinden geldiğince dürüstçe cevap vermeye çalıştı. E, bu bence efektif bir röportajdı. Umarız ki hani e, izleyicilerimiz de dinleyicilerimiz de e, beğenmişlerdir. Bir dahaki ünlü konuğumuzda daha az heyecanlanırız. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> evet. O halde. 
O halde. O, o halde. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Bir dahaki yayınımıza kadar güç sizinle olsun arkadaşlar. Güç sizinle olsun. Güç sizinle olsun.